You're an Egyptian, I'm an Egyptian, and as many Egyptian, if you look deeply, deeply at their nature, wonderful, great people. Well, how Islam uh, look at, you know, especially a Coptic in Egypt? People of the book, period. Dr. Hamdi Al-Sawaf and Ahmed Terwat command attention when they comment about the state of humanity. Both see hope for our often fractured world. Both have roots in Egypt. Our family also was an outsider, or not far. Mr. Thorwat hosts Beladan, a community access TV series, and he also writes for the Star Tribune's Opinion Exchange. I'm glad you made it today. You have it today? Dr. El Sawaf is the Imam at the Minnesota Islamic Center in Northeast Minneapolis. He is also a psychotherapist, family counselor, and a popular speaker around the Twin Cities. The poorest of the poor. That's, that connection between the Kariokos family and uh, my family, because... Last August, we, Ahmed interviewed Dr. El Sawaf for a no, documentary. Were, uh, the Coptic grave is revisiting a provocative family decision made some 60 years ago in Meet Swede, and that's their village, in the Nile Delta. This is one of our neighbors here. When Ahmed was a kid, his uncle Abdel Hafiz and Abdel Hafiz's best friend, a man named Karyakos, mutually decided to be buried next to one another in the same cemetery. The uncle was a Muslim. His friend was a Coptic Christian. And as you can see, that's his name. And you can tell right away his name is a Coptic name. And he was, he died 1962. The Christian friend was interred in the same Muslim cemetery as Ahmed's family a practice at odds with tradition. The, the only difference in, in this Coptic that they, the Coptic when they die, they face the Holy Land. And the Muslim will face Mecca. The grave, as you can see, this is my dad. And this is... The Coptic grave wants to plumb the unusual internment for threads that might shed more light on what's important in life. They can live together, but they cannot die together. <laughs> that kind of a thing. There is a segregation. They, they can live together and die together, but maybe not to be buried together. Okay. Muslims do have their own Islamic cemetery to bury their, their dead people, and the Christian or Coptic in, in Egypt yeah. in particular, or, or almost, I would say, everywhere. Yeah. It's part of the traditions, yeah. part of the teaching. Well, how Islam uh, look at, you know, especially the Coptic in Egypt? People of the book. Period. These are the people of the book. And looking at us Muslims, Christian and, and, and Jewish people, people of the book, no matter what that book is now, I don't care whether it is revised or distorted or it doesn't matter. That, that connection between the Karyakos family and uh, my family, both of us were an outsider. You know, they were, they were not farmers. They weren't hunting and gathering. They go and hunt wolves and fox. Uh, our family also was an outsider, or not farmers, who were running the school. So there was a connection, an affinity between uh, their family. And, and uh, you know, I just want to tell that story. Okay. You know, I oh. feel I owe it to this family uh, to tell their story. And I'm very excited to go and talk and get the Christian version of the Coptic version of this talk to the, 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 the family for the first time. In November, Ahmed did just that. He met and shared memories with Salwa Karyokos, the daughter of Karyokos the hunter, the Christian who rests in peace next to his Muslim friend. A, a, a big difference, Ahmed, between your uncle and uh, uh, Karyakos. Both of them, and I'm sure many people around them, they were utilizing their innate nature without any complexity, without any, any other things to contaminate their nature when they are dealing with each other first as a human being. 
second as citizen of one country, third as living together and they never harm each other, okay? But when it comes to very uh, sophisticated things, philosophy of this and that, this would really contaminate that relationship. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah. Isn't it the Prophet of Islam while he was sitting with his uh, companions? It was, was, a, was a funeral, it was a coffin passing by. And uh, a dead person, a dead person passing by. And all of a sudden he stood up. And, uh, and his companions were kind of really shocked and surprised, telling him that, Oh, Prophet of Islam, that dead person in his coffin is not a Muslim. He is a Jew. How come you stand up for him? He looked at them and said, Isn't he a human being and he deserves me to stand up for him while he's passing by, while he's dead? What does it tell us on that? People do not go, as I mentioned today in our Friday sermon, go to bits and pieces in here. They never go in depth to look at things in order to learn from it. Death is a sacred moment. I might be uh, going off of what Islam is telling me, but it is my relationship with my Coptic brother. You're very welcome, even in your death, to be buried there in our Muslim cemetery, and it doesn't harm us, it doesn't bother us, it doesn't do anything bad between us, and there is a wonderful message in here, Ahmed. Look at us in the time and the moment of death. Let's capitalize in our moment and the time of our living. life. Yeah. Living. Can't we learn something from this? This is a very powerful message, Ahmed. But this is wonderful and a great story to be shared with people. Look at us. Look how we relate to each other. Democratic Visions is handcrafted by volunteers from Eden Prairie, Edina, Minnetonka, Hopkins, and Bloomington. Watch us on select community access channels and on YouTube. This is Carol Sundstrom.